morning, fellow mariners, ladies and gentlemen who have taken the time to join us here today. Some of you perhaps at a very short notice. A very good morning to you all. So today, as you know, is the 25th June. IMO observes this day from 2011. We've been observing this day as the day of the seafarer. So on behalf of the chairman of the National Maritime Day Celebrations Committee, Chennai, uh, the Chennai chapters of IMEI, CMMI and the Nautical Institute, it is my pleasure to welcome you <coughs> today to the web webinar we are building. The theme today for the year, as you all know, is fair future for the seafarers. And to that end, we've organized this webinar and we certainly hope to keep you all interested with a quite a dynamic speaker lineup uh, followed by a Q&A session. Uh, and uh, quickly before we start, just a couple of rules I'd like to say. Uh, I would request, except for the speaker, I would request others to kindly mute their audios uh, while uh, the speakers are speaking. And uh, the second thing is that we would like to stick to the time schedule. So I will also play the role of the timekeeper um, and perhaps butt in at times. So excuse me in advance. And uh, that is it. Let's kick, uh, kick start this thing. I'd like to call uh, Mr. Sanjeev Bakil, over <laughs> Vice Chairman, NMDC Committee, Secretary IMEI to you know take over the button. Please, sir, Sanjeev, sir. Thank you, uh, Kevin Dev. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to you all. Uh, trust all of you and your family are safe and keeping good health. On behalf of the Chairman, National Maritime Day Celebration Committee, Chennai, uh, Sri Ajit Kumar Sukumaran, uh, Principal Officer, MMD Chennai, and the Chairman and Executive Council members of Chennai chapters of NMDC, IMEI, CMMI, and Nautical Institute. I welcome each and every guest present here on this day of Seafarer 2021. A special welcome to all the guests who have joined us from various states of India and overseas, press and media, uh, Captain Kamal, uh, who is having this live on Marek's YouTube. Above all, a warm welcome to our guests. Take... Mute all, please. Uh, above all, a warm welcome to our greatest stakeholders, the seafarers, who are our real heroes, and few who have managed to join today while they are currently sailing on board and others who are undergoing the post courses, including the cadets who are going to take up this tradition forward. This could probably be the first time in history of the Day of Seafarer that we have more number of seafarers present here than the shore-based stakeholders. And the same has probably been possible due to the online platform available today and the message reaching to all our beloved seafarers. We could see more than about 270 right now at the beginning, that's good. And let's start the day. Chennai has been fortunate that all the professional bodies, whether it is IMEI, CMMI, or Nautical Institute, all have always been working towards a common objective. And year on year, we celebrate the Day of Seafarer or the National Maritime Day or the World Maritime Day jointly under the aegis of NMDC. In 2010, the IMO decided to designate June 25th as the International Day of Seafarer as a way to recognize that almost everything that we use in our daily lives has been directly or indirectly affected by sea transport. The purpose of the day is to thank the seafarers for their contribution to the world economy and also the civil society and for the risk and the personal cost they bear while on their jobs. 2020 Day of Seafarer campaign focused its message around urging government to recognize seafarers as a key worker and ease the travel restrictions for them to facilitate the crew changes. For 2021, the theme of the Day of Seafarer is Fair Future for the Seafarers, continuing to encourage governments to support seafarers amid this pandemic. The campaign discusses issues that are relevant to seafarers after the pandemic, such as fair treatment of seafarers, fair working conditions, fair training, fair safety, etc. Indian administration has been in the forefront, and we personally have witnessed the tireless efforts taken by the Indian administration in supporting seafarers in all possible ways in all the areas of this year campaign. Uh, we have seen, I think, uh, right from the day when the national lockdown took place, uh, we have seen the DD shipping or the MMD. Uh, they have been, uh, again, uh, who have been working tirelessly to make this possible. Uh, the same is also evident from the DJ circulars and orders which have been issued 
uh, including the nautical line engine band circulars time to time, like uh, the circulars on extension of validity of seafarers, COCs, statutory certificates, periodical surveys and audits of Indian registered ships in view of COVID outbreak, issuing various SOPs from time to time for the seafarers, the MTIs, the ports and other stakeholders. The latest being the DJ circular 20 of 2021 on June 22nd, as regards the second dose of vaccination for seafarers. This year itself, uh, probably we have seen 25 circulars, and last year I had seen about 40 circulars. Almost, uh, DG is quite proactive in making the circulars, uh, seeing the COVID situation, including the examination systems itself. So we have witnessed also the various shipping companies, associations, organizations, MTIs, and individual seafarers who are actively involved in supporting seafarers during this pandemic in all possible ways. Recently, few shipping companies and associations conducted various vaccine drives for seafarers and their family members. One of the shipping companies and MMD Chennai surveyors have also made contribution for the seafarers by donating oxygen concentrators, which are available at Chennai Seafarers Club. And thanks to OPO for providing a dedicated uh, rooms for seafarers at this seafarer club. Glad that India is proactive and the campaign of IMO Fair Future for Seafarer, I think is already implemented. Let's hear more views directly from the horse's mouth, the active seafarers who are going to speak today and the shipping companies who are going to present today's webinar. Thank you and Jai Hind. Uh, and now I would like to take a liberty to introduce our keynote speaker, Captain Dhaninder Sagar, Deputy Nautical Advisor to the Government of India, Chennai. Captain Dhaninder Sagar is an alumnus of TS Rajendra, 1979 batch. He then had an opportunity to sail on almost all types of vessels with Shipping Corporation of India. After sailing for close to 20 years, in the year 2000, he stepped ashore by joining as a nautical faculty at LBS College of Advanced Maritime Studies and Research. During his tenure of about six years at LBS College, he could guide the nautical students of various competency grades for classroom as well as similar courses. At LBS College, he also pursued for his extra master certificate of competency, which was awarded to him in 2005. In 2006, Captain Sagar took charge as surveyor in charge of Mercantile Marine Department, Noida, and served for a period of eight years. He was on technical advisory committee of DLL on the various projects, including pilot projects on AISB for tracking fishing vessels, etc. In June 2015, he was posted at MD Kolkata in the rank of Deputy Nautical Advisor to Government of India. He has been involved in casualty investigation on behalf of Indian administration. He has been a part of Indian delegation to IMO London on a regular basis. In April 2009, he was posted as survey in charge at MMD Port Blair for about a year and could simplify the survey procedures for various passenger ship and high-speed crafts operating under Andamans and Nicobara. June, July, this, uh, he has been posted at MMD Chennai as Deputy North Advisor to the Government of India. Now, may I request Captain Sagar to kindly present his keynote at us, please. Captain Sagar. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Sanjeev. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, respected Sri Ajiz Kumar Kumaran, Principal Officer, MMD Chennai. Uh, my seniors, esteemed members from the maritime industry, speakers for the seminar, and dear seafarers. Uh, first of all, let me congratulate all the seafarers on the occasion of 11th International Seafarers Day. I've been asked to deliver a keynote address, so I'll briefly tell about the Seafarers Day, staying within the allocation. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, the day of the Seafarer provides an opportunity to pay tribute to the world's 1.5 billion seafarers for the unique and all too often overlooked contribution to the well being of the general public. It promotes the recognition that almost everything we use in our daily lives has been directly or indirectly affected by the seaborne transport. The international shipping industry is responsible for the carriage of around 90% of the world trade, nearly 50,000 merchant ships sail around the world's routes and are principal movers of the international trade, transporting every uh, kind of cargo. 
on this day tribute could be given by using as many social media networks as possible the celebrations of the cpr day has taken the form of an online campaign in which the organizers asked everyone to voice their support using social networks people around the globe were asked to say thank you seafarer on various medias like facebook twitter by posting a video on youtube discussing on linkedin or even writing a inspirational blog objective is by generating interaction on the social media about seafarers respect recognition and gratitude to seafarers everywhere can be generated the universal outreach of social media will raise awareness of the vital role seafarers play in the world economy and in many respects in sustainable development enabling ships to carry world trade safely efficiently and with minimal impact on the environment the day of the seafarer is also an opportunity to educate the public about issues facing the modern day seafarer issues such as uh, piracy criminalization of the seafarers but most importantly it is the occasion for us the world to say thank you seafarers uh, in the wake, in the wake of covid 19 pandemic uh, seafarers found themselves on the first of all front line of the global response but also subject to difficult working conditions surrounding uncertainties and difficulties around the port access resupply crew changeovers crew repatriation etc uh, in the light of this the 2020 day of the seafarers campaign focused its message around urging government to recognize seafarers as key workers and ease travel restrictions for them to facilitate crew changes india was also one of them now 2021 day of seafarers campaign will continue to encourage governments to support seafarers amid the pandemic but extend its message calling for a fair future of the seafarers as said by the earlier speaker also and will be throughout the seminar the campaign will discuss issues that will still be relevant to seafarers after the pandemic such as as uh, mr bakil said earlier fair treatment of seafarers fair working conditions in line with mlc a uh, fair training fair safety etc and uh, in the end i thank national maritime day celebration committee chennai uh, for organizing a seminar on this occasion and hope this seminar helps us in spreading the message and provide insight into understanding the issues and uh, mitigating to some extent the problems faced by the seafarers thank you so much thank you very much uh, captain uh, ramin sagar this was a very great keynote address and actually set the tone for the webinar thank you so much uh, so uh, being the day of the seafarer next we will have a the video message for the day by the general secretary of imo kataklim Seafarers have always been at the heart of the world trade. Their work touches the lives of each and every one of us, whether it is the food on our tables, the medicine that keeps us healthy, the computers we are using for work and leisure, or the vehicles that transport us in our daily lives. All these items are primarily transported by sea. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic created challenging working conditions. 
including difficulties with the port access, repatriation, crew changes, and the more. Unfortunately, there are still too many seafarers that have not been able to leave ships for an extended period beyond their country, and others have been unable to join ships in order to earn a living. Despite these difficulties, seafarers have gone beyond the call of duty, working tireless to keep global trade flowing. IMO and our partners are doing our part to support seafarers and make sure that they are given the rights and protections of key workers. This includes priority vaccination and ease of travel. Last year, on the Day of the Seafarers, the IMO asked the world to recognize that seafarers are key workers. Many countries have answered that call. However, the crew change crisis is far from being resolved. We all must keep seafarers in our hearts and continue to take action that will return seafaring to normal practices for crew changes. So this year, we are calling for a fair future for seafarers. Our 2021 Day of the Seafarers campaign builds on the progress we have made to support seafarers on pandemic-related challenges. It aims to draw global attention to other areas where fairness is important. This includes a safe and secure environment on ships, reasonable working conditions, fair treatment in all situations, as well as respect for the rights of all, regardless of race, gender, and religion. I'm especially pleased that IMO will be amplifying the voices of seafarers themselves as they discuss what a fairer future would look like to them under the hashtag Fair Future for Seafarers. Seafarers, we are listening and we will make sure you are heard. If you are a seafarers, I encourage you to participate in this discussion and share your vision for a fair future. And if you are a part of the maritime industry or beneficiary of the services of seafarers, I ask you to listen to their words, show your appreciation, and take action to create a better world for seafarers who do so much for all of us. That was uh, the IMO General Secretary's uh, message uh, for the year on the Day of the Seafarers. So let's get into the webinar in earnest. We'll have the speaker session now. Um, audience uh, who would like to post their questions to the individual speakers, please post them in the uh, chats and they will be addressed right at the end. Um, can I now call on Captain uh, Viren Bhatia, uh, the Vice Chairman CMI Chennai Chapter to introduce our first speaker. Matthias. Videos can be kept on if those who wish to, please. There's no issue. Yes. Can we put there? Captain Bhatia, you have to unmute. Oh. So, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 okay, yeah. I'll just introduce uh, Mr. Ramakrishnan. Uh, Mr. Ramakrishnan. Uh, Bhatia, you are coming. Yes. Can you unmute, sir? Uh, Kevin Bhatia, you are there now. Uh, we have we are on the first speaker session. Uh, if you can unmute and introduce uh, Mr. Ram. I think I think his screen is frozen. Probably he has signal issue. No problem. I'll just introduce. Uh, yes, please. You know, and he yeah. has some issues with his computer screen. So somebody else yeah. can take over, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We will introduce uh, Mr. Ramakrishnan, chief engineer. Uh, from CIT in 1986. Uh, he's a fellow of Marine uh, 
Institute of Engineers, presently with Lakshadweep Development Corporation, passenger vessels as a chief engineer. In his career, he has been 31 years uh, with Barber Ship Management uh, and in teaching for four years. And again, he has gone back to sea. He's been sailing uh, with various vessels. Uh, uh, and uh, he's going to talk on today's topic. Uh, uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Ramkrishnan, over to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, very Namaskar. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me share the screen. Give me a few seconds. So I'm the opening batsman. Oh, I have to. I have to start the door. Can you all screen, see the screen, sir? Yes, please go ahead. Yes, you can put it on full screen. Yes, we can see the full screen. And go up to the first slide and uh, uh, full screen, please. Yes, sir. Loud and clear, sir. It's clear. Yeah. Yeah. Can, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll have, we'll a, yeah. We'll have a buzzer at 10 minutes, please. Uh, for, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> buzzer starts yeah. now only. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, sir. Thanks. Yeah. So, thank you for the opportunity given to me. Actually, uh, I have done uh, two sailings, uh, both in the critical situation. Last time, uh, last 2020 was uh, between June and October. you the real stories so we are mainly concentrating on these uh, issues which we are seeing on the uh, screen so mainly the shore leave and uh, sign off better wages are the most critical ones and criminalization is there rest hours and all is there fine so to special tribute to seafarers even the psa singapore authorities also have, must have done told noon now local so we will uh, Thank you. Uh, so we'll be talking about the day of, uh, of seafarer campaigning, calling for the fair future. Already IMO has seen the message also. So Swami Vivekananda has told us, give me 100 energetic young men and I shall transform the India. So with that quote only, I have taken uh, 100 plus participants who are uh, actual seafarers now. And we have even rewritten the motto, what we call safe ships, clean seas. And uh, we'll add this one, fair future for seafarers for this year. If you all agree with me. So these are 100 uh, seafarers have given the feedback within these three, four days. Thank you very much. And uh, also we are taking from the international seafarers. This is this SHI. This is a seafarers happiness index. If you know that our neighboring country, Bhutan is the uh, highest and also international level, uh, you'll have, this uh, mission to seafarers is doing this uh, audit, actually survey. So they have done the survey. This is the latest every quarter they are doing the survey. So our India is at the second in the first quarter of 2021. So we also participated about 19%. So it is authentic. So latest one, like what I have told you, I have joined in these two peak actually. And uh, now also still we are waiting for the result. So the happiness index is uh, rising up only. That is a good news. So uh, they are all taken from, you can also participate in that happy at sea.org. So various ages, age groups also. And uh, very happy that uh, Badisa electrical officer is uh, the highest, uh, happy, happiest man in the world. Next is chief engineer, so we expect everybody. Then uh, first thing is about the positive changes. Yeah, uh, everybody asked for the internet. Yes, we are getting, but please uh, raise the uh, storage like uh, data up from 100 MB and also better food uh, in this uh, concept. Yeah, please. Uh, in this concept, uh, like uh, I have been taking since it's a passenger ship, I could get these oranges. And uh, uh, since uh, it is really difficult, you all know that. And most of the seafarers, especially the top people, are asking to reconsider this 0.04 policy also. Again, this uh, 
reducing manning you all know that now we are coming down even as a chief engineer when the second engineer and the third engineer there is no fourth engineer on board so i have to keep the 8 to 12 watch also so they are uh, there is no time only just to eat work uh, sleep so uh, single man army actually uh, and uh, still we are waiting for the short hand wages and all but uh, safe manning is uh, doing something so long working hours is a uh, real difficult fine the next one is a uh, social interaction uh, happiness index is, has come down by 0.01 so you all know that jaat pyar rishta gangway tak we say but it is not like that even i, I used to get the from filipino gs he used to send t-shirts on in the greek vessels even uh, after 18 years uh, the chief cook up from goa he were, we all went to his home and all and even sri lankan chief engineer also i met him so his uh, relationships are very important especially during this corona covid times complete surely uh, denial you all know that so it has also come down the happiness index from 5.53 from the previous one so we are all gone like uh, there is a lot of charm uh, there uh, to make you see i was a i am a ncc certificate holder and uh, during my college name uh, i was attached to the army in goa signals and uh, i was very keen in joining one of the defense and i attended army naval air force and finally went to bhopal naval interview to uh, recalling that then uh, he said uh, okay uh, so he said why you want to come here uh, better go on the mod like uh, since i was doing the pre service uh, pre ce training in the portress so he told to enjoy the thing but that uh, charm is not now and uh, regarding from the seamen's clubs we, uh, even you don't get the mail uh, the seafarers club they used to give you there is a mail for you you all remember so still i am in the cap inter cap which was given in my first ship in 90 from the seamen's club so i always carry on board as a token of appreciation so we used to get uh, so many gifts and uh, from norway during christmas and all so we are all happy about that uh, gifts of gratitude and coming the major topic about the problem of crew changes lot of uh, we also had to go 6 hours drive from uh, amadabad to kanla Uh, even some people have to travel 48 hours from chennai to kanla sikha and all we had those difficulties last year but nowadays this is uh, almost reduced uh, uh, this report is about december 2020 40 uh, for 400000 but uh, now it is all reduced thanks to all our uh, shipping companies so the fear is there the problem of crew change is still existing you we'll have to look into that so when you are not there uh, like you are not coming home people are exhausted mentally disturbed and anxious all are knowing it being taken care and very very important one is the avoid age discrimination on board ships so especially in rejoining and uh, people always ask for young and energetic we see fairers always uh, uh, mind as well as maybe age is a number i can tell you so please uh, do not uh, it uh, decrease the motivation and uh, increase the sickness of the seafarer just uh, by doing the age discrimination a uh, humble request so everything is for money finally so when shipping company earnings have surged uh, seafarers uh, wages remain so one would expect when prices of anything has gone up we are still the, the same way without us there is no world actually you all know that when that serious disruption no the ship has there only the helmsman is getting about 1700 dollars so the world should know that so this is a very important factor to be considered for the far future so uh, again coming to this covid vaccination we have to thank our uh, chennai portress in uh, chennai and um, they have, people are asking our seafarers why can't we have the same thing like the one shot in us so upon recognition of key workers uh, still pandemic no mechanism to issue now we are improving even i have seen the cmma in mumbai also is giving a wonderful job insa also is doing a wonderful job so we are on the progress so we have to thank the other companies uh, uh, all the organization like net nautilus international for giving us the fair treatment you can go in the web and also imo helpline scat seafarer crisis action team that can also help you and also seafarer international relief fund so they are having about 530000 dollars uh because we uh, really 
feel sorry for the lives which have lost and still they couldn't be taken home and also there is a website mtsvcare.org with the team mission mission to see for us with wallam and standard club for e learning and mental health ishwan is doing a wonderful job see for us health information program you can uh, this is a international marine ship and also for mental health is very very important ics imha itf they are doing a good job so you can enter their website so we can uh, do that and also for uh, regarding avoiding age discrimination on board ships ics is giving a pdf guidelines to the shop and uh, last but not the least dg is doing a very great job so they have been doing it uh, uh, 50 plus orders and uh, extension of our certificates training facilities and uh, sops for the ports you can see from here from 0 to 19 may also right of sea fares already covered in merchant shipping act and all we have to thank our dg also and uh, i thank you all the sea fares who took the time to share your uh, thought with me so they all told me that things which really frustrate them and concern them the things that make positive difference and uh, offered some opportunities for improvement so let us bring out the bahubali in you i will uh, i'm sure we will get the good results we will get the Sir, thank you. Thank you very much, sir, Mr. Ramakrishnan, for bringing out these issues. Uh, I know you've experienced these things firsthand, and uh, and I'm grateful you could share with us. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, next, uh, I would like to call uh, uh, Captain Ganeshyam, uh, Secretary CMMI Chennai Chapter, to come in and introduce our second speaker of the day, please. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, sea farers. It's a pleasure in. Uh, introducing captain samant bhaktavatsala he is going to be a current speaker who is sailing currently as master with the fleet management fleet shipping management services he is a resident of chennai he is a avid sports fan and a fitness enthusiast and he has recently has been sailing especially during the covid time and he accepted to speak immediately when we called him and uh, thank you very much uh, captain samant on that and uh, regarding his career it was short and sweet uh, i liked it he joined shipping corporation of india as cadet in 1999 and with few companies he served later and finally he joined the uh, fleet management as in 2007 until date he has been sailing with them welcome captain samant uh, bakso excellent thank you very much uh, thank you captain ganeshan thank you for the welcome uh, good morning to all the distinguished guests fellow speakers and colleagues of the seafaring community happy day of the seafarer to all of you i would be presenting my perspective of having sailed during the pandemic and looking ahead and i'll be going back to see this day of the seafarer of this year provides as an opportunity to ponder on the state of the seafarer during these times which are unusually challenging and in many aspects they are unparalleled so i'll be using my experiences from the last year while i was on board to present the perspective of person who is looking back to going on board and what questions are in his mind and what challenges he thinks he'll be facing first and foremost while we were on board during the pandemic last july august while the numbers were going up we were all thinking of a vaccine which will be worked out by this time next year and that will be the magic weapon and we will all be back sailing happily now the vaccines have come out at various times and various locations but they have also presented us with some questions and challenges so the clarity for the seafarer whether he should vaccinate himself fully which vaccine he has to get and if he has to have some rest before he goes on board and there is a particular vaccine in india which still doesn't have the approval for visas required so if i take that vaccine or if i had access am i heard yes ma'am yeah yeah please go ahead please go ahead sorry yeah. there was a disturbance please go ahead Uh, you are muted i think i will unmute okay yeah. uh, because there uh, some sound on 
Uh, unmute, please. Can you unmute yourself? Can you unmute? Uh, the left hand side bottom is the unmute button. Kevin Saman, can you unmute yourself, please? Saman, can you unmute yourself? No. You're not unmuting, Captain Samad. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 So, like I was saying, I am unmuted now, sir. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like I was saying, uh, there is a vaccine in India which doesn't have the required approvals for visas for a few countries. If I take that vaccine, will I be forced to vaccinate again with a different manufacturer's vaccine? And the time frame. Uh, gap in between doses, all these were uh, adding to the confusion. But I have to say, I have to give a word of commendation for the authorities who have stepped in and reduced the gap between the doses so to aid the seafarers who are looking for employment opportunities. But before I was going to talk and I was collecting material, there have been colleagues who have asked me to mention that why was there a need for seafarers who are key workers they had to wait for much longer to gain access to the vaccines. But having said that, at this moment in time, the access to seafarers has been provided and authorities are working on it. So these were the issues faced while we were thinking about the vaccines. Now, once the seafarer is vaccinated and then he's looking to travel on board, then he faces the travel restrictions. Just because of being in India and being of this nationality, some countries have imposed restrictions on seafarers to travel to their shores and gain employment. So these lack of uniformity in travel restrictions are also troubling and challenging for seafarers who are otherwise losing out on their employment opportunities where some other nationalities are seen favorably for various reasons. This causes delayed relief for people on board. This causes delay in employment opportunities for people in India, seafarers in India, resulting in drop in morale and long layoffs. And for those people on board who are stuck and are not able to find employment or companies and owners are having to look for other nationalities to provide relief for them. And then once we get on board, the anxiety faced during travel that still continues on board, that where we don't know whether we are still free of the infection or are we still healthy after the travel. And once we get on board, if all people on board have been vaccinated, is it safe to work with them now? And they might as well think they've gone through so many cases where people have caught the virus after the vaccination. So there could be some unease in the working atmosphere on board. Uh, these sort of restrictions, which some ports of call impose on the seafarers, visiting seafarers, vaccinated or otherwise, if they have some sort of uniformity for the seafarer to prepare himself, would be much better. And the same way, if shore personnel, when ship visits a port, shore personnel, if they are maintaining these precautions as well as the seafarers themselves, so that uniformity is missing in many ports, which I noticed during the last year in the pandemic, especially during a dry dock. These present different challenges. So uniformity in tackling the situation is called for. And once all these things are done, and finally, if, and when we come out of the present pandemic, will things change for the better in future? Like was presented by the previous speaker, shore leave and access to facilities for seafarers were non almost non-existent even before the pandemic, for various reasons. Many of the ports prefer to wave in the face of the seafarers their security requirements or other, other such requirements, commercial requirements in denying shore leave or any other access to shore for various reasons. So the authorities and the powers that be would step in and, I don't know, impose a penalty or do take some measure to provide some relief because like a pat in the back for a job well done, a short time ashore after a long sailing or after a hectic sailing will help a great deal in improving the morale of the seafarers. Same thing will be for safer working environment. This 
has been uh, tackled almost very well by the memorandums of understanding by, for all port state controls. But still, there are some places in the world where rules and regulations don't apply equally for all the vessels. So safer working environment is not guaranteed as we would like to be. And like it was mentioned previously, work under SR management. This sadly, even now, planning for work under SR management takes up most of the work hours. So possibly because of lack of manning or shortage of manning, something could be done regarding improving manning levels or minimum manning requirements. So which being a critical job, especially on some types of ships, which are, uh, let me say, uh, being criminalized, seafarers are being criminalized for incidents involving those ships. So these present uh, sensitive hazards in, while working as it is. So, and having short management and overworked crew will not be good for anyone. Hopefully this will be looked into in the future. This is one of the aims for the future. And then for the seafarers themselves, the seafarers as usual can sometimes complain about many things, but there is some truth in many of the complaints. Having said that, seafarers themselves can train themselves better, equip themselves better for the future. And rather than complain about the challenges posed by automation and faster turnarounds and everything, they can train themselves better and prepare themselves rather than you know, pointing fingers at others at all times. So they'll have to upskill themselves and find training facilities or any other means to keep themselves updated at all times. And this would help if training facilities, like in the pandemic, we can learn something from having to do everything online this will help if training facilities can be extended while seafarer is at sea also. And one window system of certification for easy renewal of certification and keeping themselves employed at all times. And then there are other wishes. Even during the pandemic, when people have sailed eight or nine months, I've had cases where people come up to me with a request of extension of their contract, which is difficult to imagine after having spent so much time. So many of our national crew, we, we could imagine they want to avoid tax uh, and they want to stay at, away from home for a while. So they need to extend their contract. This is not an ideal situation as it is. Like we were discussing earlier, it is a high risk job and needs most of our attention at all times. And then extending, even extending a contract, even after you are down morally and you are tired physically, doesn't lead to good scenarios on board. So if the tax structure or any other SOP can be provided to a seafarer by, I understand most of our unions are already working on it, that would help. And then coming away from those things to COVID-19 again, right now we know there is a pandemic on, but we still, at least I still don't know what are the last longing effects on a human body for people who have contracted COVID while they are on board, while they are at home? And if effects like with other diseases or some exposures, if effects come out two, three, four years later, can we have a mechanism or at least guidelines by IMO or national authorities, how a seafarer can deal with those consequences or if a support mechanism or counseling mechanism can be provided for the seafarer? And on that note, there have been cases where my colleagues have passed away after contracting COVID, leaving their families in bad shape. And although I know there is a fund going around, even for seafarers who, not, who were not employed during their death, uh, this knowledge needs to be promulgated better. So people who are affected can be uh, informed of how to avail these benefits. And then finally, to end, uh, everything was asked of the authorities. Now, something from the seafarer side. Seafarers, I, I for one, would like to promise that I will always work efficiently and safely. And this is a situation where it has been tough on all the ship owners, all parts of the industry. So we would like to extend our complete support 
to come out of this difficult times as one. And we thoroughly understand and appreciate the efforts uh, being done by the authorities and the fleet personnel departments of various companies. And we are willing to you know, engage and do whatever is needed so we can cooperate and coexist as and when we're required to ensure safety of seafarers' health and future. That ends my talk, gentlemen. Thank you for providing the opportunity. Thanks once again. Thank you, Captain Samad. That was uh, really excellent. Uh, you know, your viewpoint, besides being actually a seafarer uh, who's uh, been, uh, you've presented your case and you've also very beautifully closed it by saying about your appreciation. We really like this. I can see a lot of questions popping up. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, so uh, next we will have, uh, so now we've heard the sea perspective. Um, now let's uh, move on to the show perspective. So uh, I'd like to call Mr. Suresh Shinoi, Treasurer IMEI Chennai to introduce our uh, third speaker, please. Yeah. Th thank you, Captain Dave. Good, good morning all, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, audio. Yeah. Yeah. Today I am given a pleasant task of introducing my good friend and colleague, Captain Lalit. He started his career as a deck cadet with the India Cement Shipping Division, then joined the Wallam and India Steamship. He is currently working with the VSHIP as Marine Superintendent, managing the operation of tankers. He has presented several papers at the in house seminars. He is an avid sportsman. He plays football for the physical well-being and chess for mental well-being. Welcome, Captain Lalit. So, thank you, Mr. Suresh. That was a very kind uh, presentation, I would say. And uh, a very happy Seafarers Day to all of you on this call. Uh, it's very heartening to know that we are recognized as such by IMO and the world as such. And uh, very nice to be here. So, I'll just share my screen. Uh, Is that visible? Yeah, please go ahead. Perfect. Yeah. So, uh, yes, we've heard uh, the perspective from uh, ship, uh, shipboard uh, seafarers, from Captain Samuel and Mr. Uh, I do recognize uh, all the challenges that they're facing. And uh, this is just an attempt to uh, give a ship manager's perspective on the unique times that we are living in. And uh, before I go to the next slide, I wish to acknowledge that most of us ashore uh, on this call and even other places owe our jobs uh, literally to seafarers who are playing the trade in some remote corner of the world on, you know, on various kinds of ships. So uh, a real uh, heartful thank you to all of you. So uh, what I would like to start with is uh, the focus being the last 15 months or so of uh, the new uh, pandemic uh, first upon us. And uh, before that itself, uh, we had our own challenges, like uh, it was mentioned by the earlier speakers, criminalization of seafarers, uh, you know, competing with other nationalities for wages and jobs, uh, just vulnerability uh, to say piracy attacks, etc. And as if we didn't have enough on our plates, uh, here comes along a new friend and uh, thrusts us all into turmoil and uh, this was a really new dynamic and uh, frankly it took all of us some time to get to grips uh, to understand it. I really don't know if we still understand it but yeah whatever uh, we could. Uh, and then we started slowly adapting to it. Most of the companies are sure uh, that they are uh, forced to adapt at very short notice while all the other uh, modes of transport literally ground to a halt. Uh, it was only shipping that was keeping the world going. I'm sure all of you, all of you must have seen that uh, very nice WhatsApp video which came uh, some time ago, which says uh, we make the ships go. Uh, basically, ships seafarers saying that we make the ships go and uh, ships make the world go. So this is a note to uh, the same uh, thought. So once we got to grips with the situation, our first uh, priority was to protect the seafarers uh, more on the ship whatever little knowledge and uh, you know education we got ourselves we first focused on giving them supplies uh, those PPEs and rapid test kits 
but more importantly, provisions because uh, most ports were closing the doors to uh, such activities. Uh, make sure that uh, the best medicines will be required for this. Uh, uh, Captain Lalit, uh, could you speak up a little bit louder? Sorry for interrupting. I saw some comments there. Could you just come in a little bit closer, please? Sorry. Yeah, I'm on the mic. Uh, is that better? Uh, yeah, this is better. Keep it closer, please. Yeah, thank you. Maybe I'll just uh, stick this here. Okay. Yeah, so I said uh, the first uh, priority for us was the physical well being of the seafarers on board, and we started off by uh, trying to supply all the essentials like uh, the medicines, provisions, the PPE kits, and the rapid test kits. Trying to implement all the uh, various, uh, you know, the policies for restriction of visitors. Uh, doing most of the inspections by remote, so as to protect uh, the people on board. Even important inspections like sire uh, and all were uh, done remotely over the last one year or so. And then uh, we, uh, I think, most companies are sure have uh, instituted some sort of uh, remote assistance for anything related to COVID, uh, which was available 24 by 7. Uh, this, this was what we started off with, and I'm sure as we go along and as we come to know more and more of the way COVID is progressing, like Captain Simon says, we really don't understand it. Uh, we'll keep adding to this uh, protocol and this procedures that we have initiated. Now, what did we do for people who have already contacted uh, so COVID on board the ships. We have had a uh, few cases like that, uh, especially in remote areas like West Africa. Uh, so basically, in some cases, we had to quarantine the ship itself, the full ship, uh, for 14 days or so. We were required. Uh, all the other staff were uh, you know, also tested. We tied up with an industry leader called Future Care, who specialize in uh, COVID treatment by remote. So. The masters were uh, trained to contact this company directly in case anybody develops uh, symptoms, uh, any symptoms of sort of COVID or something. And uh, then where available, they were disembarked to specialized uh, quarantine hospitals. This was not easy, believe us, uh, where the... Uh, uh, sorry, that must be just right. So uh, they were dedicated quarantine hospitals and they were kept there until the patient recovered. Now the next challenge was to get them safely ashore, which was easier said than done. And uh, I'll come to that in a bit. So uh, this onboard COVID thing uh, was a big thing because even though we could have only one guy on all our ships, uh, on say one case, it did disturb us because a ship being quarantined is not easy. Uh, where you have all you know, 30 odd people uh, just uh, being at anchorage and uh, being uh, they are deprived of all contact in the external world. We had two such cases and uh, it wasn't a pleasant experience, but I would like to say that it was a safe, it was safely managed and uh, we did get out of it together. Now comes, like I was talking, what do we do once, uh, you know, people get off uh, the ship with having recovered from COVID or even with the overdue reliefs that were uh, mounting, you know, like crazy. Uh, sometime around July last year, we had a lot of, uh, and that was when all the manning uh, departments of all companies came together and uh, they went into overdrive uh, and uh, brought out some innovative steps. You know, we got together with other companies, uh, chartered flights. Uh, we actually changed a crew of uh, four uh, ships together in West Africa and Lume, uh, having uh, shared a chartered flight with uh, another colleague uh, company in Chennai itself. Uh, in some cases where uh, countries were not uh, conducive for crew change, uh, we diverted vessels. So an example being uh, a ship which was headed towards China had to go towards uh, Korea to affect a uh, full crew change. Uh, again, a full crew change is pretty unprecedented in our times. So all the risk assessments, the handovers, takeovers by you know the video before itself, before they went on board was uh, you know, a learning experience for all of us. Uh, but again, I reiterate that uh, we are getting across uh, this together, by working together uh, one step at a time. And uh, some countries, like we all know now, uh, haven't uh, really come together to form a, a conducive atmosphere for crew change. They haven't recognized us, uh, seafarers, as frontline workers yet. So we had to work through specialized corridors, specialized hubs, uh, which are very few, frankly, Singapore, maybe Korea. 
uh, Europe and US. Uh, everywhere else, we it's a very long planning. And uh, somehow, yes, we have managed to drastically bring down the overdue reliefs uh, as we stand today. But uh, I also recognize that, uh, like uh, Mr. Lim said, there are still a uh, lot of seafarers uh, who are on board and on the ships uh, who are waiting for their reliefs. Uh, so in terms of uh, the next step after uh, we tend to the physical repatriation of the people, how we attended to the problem itself was by forming a committee, a COVID committee. I'm sure this has been implemented, implemented by uh, other offices also. So these committees were in regular touch with the families of the seafarers, uh, monitoring their st relief status. In case there was any uh, requirement at home for the families, they were attended to. In some cases, the husband was on the ship and the wife contacted COVID. So uh, we had to you know, uh, initiate uh, assistance for her to get admitted to a hospital and get treated. Uh, also, as we know, there's an almost daily update now there's on what's happening, how it's to be treated, what's not to be done. And uh, just sharing these things with the seafarer, uh, just to remove the fear of the unknown. Uh, these companies have done stellar work, uh, believe me, uh, in just keeping the show going with all the challenges that we've had. And uh, a big thank you to all of them, whichever company they have uh, been instituted. Then, uh, uh, like uh, Mr. Ramki was saying, uh, yes, we have challenges with uh, bandwidths and uh, you know the amount of data that we are available to each uh, crew member on board. We try to uh, increase the bandwidth, given some you know free phone cards. Uh, this goes a long way when seafarers are able to be in touch with their loved ones, and uh, like I said, just the social connect. It eases their uh, stress levels quite a bit, and uh, they were able to uh, get across these challenging times. Uh, and uh, I'm sure this is uh, again a common uh, step which most of the uh, my colleagues in different uh, companies have undertaken, uh, with uh, maybe a few exceptions. The big uh, topic after all is the mental well-being, and uh, with the pandemic, we have seen that the stress levels have shot up, fatigue has shot up. So uh, this I speak on behalf of V-Ships that uh, we've tied up with a company called Comsight, um, who are again an industry leader in uh, providing uh, guidance and uh, treatment on men mental health issues. So masters were trained on uh, how to identify symptoms of mental uh, you know, health not being right and uh, then uh, report to this uh, company and take their advice and uh, basically uh, make sure they were looked after until they safely reach home. Uh, this, this, I would say, even though uh, it's not such a common uh, step that has been taken all around, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty important step as we are nowadays, the world is waking up to mental health issues. So this is what we at the bishops we are ready to do. Now, uh, again, vaccination drives, uh, well, it's not uh, easy, but uh, where possible, our ships went to the US. Uh, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was uh, used and we got all our uh, ship start this from the MT Kivas uh, beginning of this month. And all of them were uh, vaccinated uh, when the ship was there for quite some time. Thank you. Then uh, at shore, we have initiated a vaccination drive for the ship staff uh, on leave and their families, as well as the office staff. So this we hope to get across at the entire country, yes, uh, facing a challenge to complete uh, you know, the vaccinations. Uh, hopefully, we should uh, complete all our uh, people in the next month or so. Uh, then, with such a wide-ranging pandemic where basically there's no country which has not been affected, uh, one step which uh, we did to help the situation was with uh, over 60 uh, mining offices all over the world and uh, 16 uh, management offices, we leveraged our uh, presence. So I attended my colleagues, uh, my colleague in Glasgow, his ship came to Weizrak where I live. So he asked me to, uh, I attended the ship to do the audit and vice versa when my ship was in the US, uh, some other office attended it. That in decreased the time travel and the risk of catching the infection while traveling. Of course, we can't travel either. But uh, inspections were important or rather are important for a safe operation of the ship. And this is the way we uh, tackle uh, the situation. So finally, I would like to say that there's nothing like uh, being together and working together to overcome any challenge. 
this is also one such uh, situation and uh, this, this is most likely to show we are stronger together and uh, we need each one of us, uh, the seafarers, the shore community agents, everybody needs to work together to come out of this situation and uh, hopefully you know, overcome it completely maybe in the coming months or maybe a year or so. So uh, with that, I end my address. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, stay safe. Jai Hind. Captain Lalit, thank you very much. Uh, you know, it's heartening to see that, you know, I'm, I'm seeing the synergy uh, with you being ashore and Captain Samad, who's given it, who's been sailing, that both of you are acknowledging the fact that the company and the ship staff is doing the best that they can. Thank you so much. Uh, so we'll move on now to the last speaker of the day. Uh, can I call Captain Krish Sivaraman, uh, President of NI South India chapter, to introduce our last speaker? Thank you, Dave. Uh, good morning once again, everyone. Uh, lovely presentation so far. And uh, of course, our pinch hitter is yet to come, Captain Ram uh, Ramaswamy. Uh, I had the pleasure of uh, knowing Captain Ram uh, back in 95. Uh, uh, I was one of his first uh, recruits as a chief mate uh, for Wallums. Uh, now, uh, Captain Ram is uh, currently the CEO of uh, OSM India. And uh, he's based in Chennai. He has been based in Chennai for as long as we can remember. Uh, he spent uh, 20 years uh, at sea and about another 70 odd years uh, in the recruitment uh, sector, uh, crew recruitment sector. And uh, I don't know, the math doesn't add up because he doesn't look a day over 45. Uh, but if that's what he claims, that's what it is. I agree uh, with that, absolutely. I <laughs> 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 Uh, Captain Ramaswamy has also been a port captain at Houston. Uh, he's an advisor to uh, uh, AMED for uh, the Angolan training program. Uh, and uh, he is a director of FOSMA uh, and uh, also is the honorary consul for Angola. Um, Captain uh, uh, Ramaswamy has been uh, serving uh, from cadet to master uh, with Mughal lines and then on with uh, Wallums. Uh, and then he stepped ashore uh, to get into the recruitment space uh, with Wallums initially, and then uh, uh, with the C team, frontline C team, OSM, part of the same Norwegian family. Uh, he, he comes to the table with a vast experience. Uh, he spends a lot of time, uh, something we uh, don't quite see, quietly working behind on philanthropic activities. Networker is uh, uh, well. Uh, uh, he, he's, he's as I said, he brings a wealth of uh, experience, and I we all look forward to hearing uh, what his expectations of a fair future are for the seafarers and how the future is. We have, we have heard uh, so far about COVID, uh, but I'm sure uh, Ram would like to go beyond uh, and see how sustainable uh, the future for seafarers is. Welcome, Captain Ramaswamy. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much for introducing me. And uh, first of all, I have to uh, congratulate the organizing committee for having put up the an excellent webinar. It's a really a big hard work. It's not easy to bring in 350 plus participants to attend the webinar. Excellent. Well done. Well, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Just a week back, I was approached by Captain Ajay. Uh, can you say a few words uh, on this day of the seafarers? And this topic is on uh, the fair future for seafarers. Well, having worked uh, almost 25 years, my uh, Chris said that I have 17 years, I came ashore 95. 96 onwards, I've been doing the crewing. So I've been 25 years with the crewing now. And uh, so having spent 25 years with the seafarers and very closely working with them, and uh, some of them are here, my guys, my colleagues, and I was so happy to see Dave, Lalit, Chris, of course, I've been talking to them. There's so many of them. It's an excellent opportunity to meet everyone and at least on a virtual uh, you know, platform. Thank you uh, once again, uh, calling me and uh, having a few chat on this. Well, I made some, uh, uh, made a presentation with a few slides. 
I will just share it with you all and uh, let's go on with it. Just let me see one. One minute, let me call my guys just to help me out. I think something has gone wrong. You want me to share, sir? Sir, at the bottom of the screen, there is a share screen icon with a green arrow. You need to press that. Your PowerPoint is there. Okay, if you want, I can share for you, sir. No problem. Yeah, because actually this is already. I'll do it. And I think Captain uh, Ram's uh, thing uh, screen, but you have to go open the presentation and then press the uh, share screen button. Captain Ram, uh, go to the presentation page and then press the green button. Okay, that's it. We see it. Can we go on full screen, please? Yeah. Yeah, we are sharing it. Uh, Captain Ram, thank I'm you. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done it. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, I think you'd have to operate it because since you have shared the screen, uh, Mr. Vakil. Uh, yes, sir. We'll do. We'll do. Uh, let me see if I can share it from here. One sec. Okay, no, you have to do that. Mr. Akil? Yeah. One minute. I'll just share for you. I'll share for you. Yeah. No problem. Uh, Most of the points uh, uh, I'm going to talk has already been discussed by, uh, I mean, spoken by Mr. Amukshnan and Lalit and everyone, but I will add a few more. It may be interesting. So mine is about eight, nine slides. It's taken about 10 minutes time. Okay. So will you be able to do that, uh, Mr. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sharing. Sir. Sharing. I'm just sharing. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. As you say, I'll just share. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Yes, sir. I'll just go across. Let me just share the full. Yeah. You can come to the full screen, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, during the pandemic, the seafarers had found themselves on the front line. Okay, let me go. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And the first point I've written is fair future for seafarers. When the pandemic stuck, the world went into lockdown. Can we imagine a world with seafarers staying at home? Hundreds of thousands of seafarers still working at sea beyond their contract time and equal numbers are facing financial difficulties and desperate to join duties and join earning wage to, uh, to start earning wages. During the pandemic, seafarers had found themselves on the front line of the global response and difficult COVID-19 situations, encompassing uncertainties and difficulties around port access regarding supply, crew changeovers and repatriations. Have we been fair to the seafarers? At this point, I would like to say that during the peak in the last year, in the month of May and June, we were the first one to start the flight. And I took uh, uh, two uh, VLCC from the yard, uh, yard delivery because we had to do it. And so also we started uh, the crew chain by diverting ships. And uh, the chartered plane was the, 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 the key solutions because once we done this and the cost of the companies have started moving in these directions, and there's almost two to three flights were operating between Chennai and uh, uh, Matala, that is very close to Dal, uh, to uh, you know signing on, signing off. So that was a great move. Uh, we have uh, did this. I'm really happy about it. And uh, fair future for seafarers. Another point. When the pandemic stuck. Okay, let's go to the next one, uh, Mr. Sanjeev. What do we re seafarers really want? They want fair treatment, fair working conditions, 
fair training, fair connect, and fair pay. Next one. Next slide, please. We have to recognize the seafarers as a front line and key workers for global supply chain, providing swift crew changes and being transparent with minimum ex expectations. We have a lot of restrictions, restrictions today because of this, we are unable to do the crew change very smoothly, but countries should look at how we can relax the, the visa re uh, requirement, things like that. And uh, this will help us to do the, you know, the, the crew change in the most uh, smooth situation, smooth condition. COVID vaccination drive as a key workers, I think which is already moving. Improved working conditions, special emphasis on avoiding fatigue. Absolute compliance on work rest hours. This I've been hearing from a lot of people. A lot of ships are doing a paper exercise. We can't do this, uh, you know, paper exercise because you can't put the people into dangers. And they have to have enough rest, you know, after their certain operations or whatever it is. So we have to really look at it and every shipping company must take this very seriously. Avoid short staffing and reduce the budget because most of the shipping companies, they don't want to reduce the budget. So what, how do they want to reduce the budget? Okay, remove the training, remove the fourth engineer, remove this. But you know, if you do not have a junior engineer, if you do not have a fourth engineer, how will you get the third engineer? You're going to get a third engineer from on the, on the, on the, uh, the, the market? No, no way. So you have to get your own people into the, the company and train them and move them up. And the health benefits, of course, medical insurance. We have started many, 10 years back, medical insurance to entire our sea staff and the family for almost uh, from the company I started C-Team in 2009. So we are continuing. I don't know how many companies are doing medical insurance for the seafarers and their family. I don't know. And uh, avoid criminal, criminalizations and blame culture. Anything and everything, they just happen. They just want to blame the seafarers. This has to be stopped because you have to remember the guys sitting ashore, including me, we all put, we have enough time at sea and we come ashore. We understand how the life at sea. So we can't be just start blaming and, and picking up this is the chief engineer's mistake, this is the master's mistake, this is the junior officer's mistake, whatever it is. We are here to support the seafarers. We need to see that they live happily on board and they contribute and they perform well to our company's expectation. Seafarers are professional, treat them so. So send you, I'll send you next one, please. Fair working conditions, better living conditions on board is very, very important because they spend quite a lot of time on the ship, six months, seven months, three months, four months. It's their home. Basically, it's just it's their home. They, they spend more time at sea than being at home. So we need to give them better work living conditions for people, for the seafarers on board. Improved working conditions, special embassies on avoiding fatigue and overall well-being, physical and mental well-being. Today, there are many companies are talking about how do we improve the mental ability of the seafarers? We have started working on it. And uh, we already signed up with the big uh, uh, software companies. Then we are going to supply apps on board to the, the, the guy individually. So whenever they are a little bit having a problem, they can go and open the apps and talk to them and talk to one-to-one -one what their mental condition, what do they need, what is making them feel suffered. So these kind of things, we need to look at it because sometimes they are not able to sign off due to some reasons or unexpectedly and something happened the last moment, we're not able to get the people on out um, off. So this absolutely on a depressive state. So we, how do we you know, take care of these things? Because after all, they are human beings and uh, spending time on board without meeting anybody, any family and anyone on board. I tell, <clears throat> probably I'm also looking at short contracts for ratings. We are giving seven months. Uh, to the ratings, but even then we need to probably reduce because they also have to stay at home with the family. I tend to stress and mental health problem. Seafarers suffer uh, stress for many reasons. They are away from family, worried about loved ones, worried about wealth, and they lack quality of sleep. Large number of seafarers say they have no one to talk on board because everybody is busy with today talking on the social media and the internet and all this thing. And communication with home can be sporadic all the time. High-speed internet to be provided. And sky-speed internet, you should only use it for some time because you should not spend time all the time sitting with the social media, YouTube, and all the things because it's not going to produce any results. Gentlemen, proper recreation facilities must be given. Good quality gym, other entertainment, school, 
and proper uh, you know we can have a you know communication session we can have a drama whatever we have time make the, you know staying on board is a, you know enjoyable and you know you 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 spend time nicely send you next one please <clears throat> good quality P okay fair work uh, good quality ppe with back support for all stock which we providing safety first allow sufficient time for safety talks on board probably toolbox meeting every day before you do something by that you know you are also communicating can you put this like yeah by this you are also communicating with your colleague you're not uh, uh, you know just only saying hello hi aim for zero incidental goal establish procedures commensurate with the goal medical incidents covering covid-19 must be included encourage them to breathe safety as safety is required for oneself and what for the vessel is serving and every minute and every second not only for some time we have to breathe safety every second award for vessel and a seafarer for good safety standard send you next one please fair training mental health training program for seafarers which i told you we are already giving uh, apps uh, to their uh, you know the uh, smartphones so they can sit on their cabin they can uh, uh, talk to these, uh, you know, these apps, and there are people who are ready to communicate with you. Value-added course for career growth and personality development. Identify the right people and uh, groom them up. STCW should be able to provide top quality seafarers. Today, it only stipulates the bare minimum requirements. Seafarer skill upgradations and competence is then left with the company hiring them. Hence, the overall process leads to varying standards of competence amongst the seafarers. So we need to have a standard training. You know, we've just got a basic training or whatever it is. But I think this, uh, Mr. Sanjeev, can you go back to that, please? The last one, please. Last one. Last one. Last one. Yes, sir, I'll go. Previous one, previous one. Yes. Yeah. STCW requirements way below with the industry requires today with modern technologies and new systems coming into play on today's modern vessels plus global compliance is time to review STCW requirements. Next one, please. Uh, okay, this I, I think I spoke on that and next one. Yes. No. Can you come back? Fair connect? Yeah. No, I cannot see. Can you come back on fair? Fair connect. Yes, please. Corporate social responsibilities and activities. We have to in, involve our seafarers in corporate social responsibilities. When I started CT in 2009, we also started an organization called Host, Hands of CT. We went up to almost half a million, million dollar and uh, giving charity. And people on board also started contributing $5, $2, $3. And this account is being maintained by Singapore office. And we are sponsored three schools here. We are paying salary to the staff where they were not able to run the school. So this kind of thing, other companies also should look at it. We also supplied over 3,000, 4,000 face masks in this, uh, in this pandemic. The last couple of weeks I've done this. And we also encourage town hall meetings, video conferencing, webinars, seminars, or team building events will surely work for towards developing a sense of loyalty. Social interactive clubs, events for the seafarers and families. Round table discussion with seniors. When the senior officers come on board, you must bring them to your head office, 10, 12 people, not the big crowd, and make them sit around and talk to them. What was the contract? How was the contract? And what did they felt? And what was the shortcoming? How we can improve? So this is when you hear from the people, it makes a lot of difference. Mr. Uh, uh, Sanjeev, can you go to the previous one? Previous one, dear. Sorry, previous one. Yeah, uh, Captain uh, Aram, sorry, we will need to uh, just to keep it. Okay, this is the last one. The last yeah. one. The last one we're going. Very sorry okay. about this, but yeah, we're running out of time. No, no, it's, it's okay. Eventually, uh, the entity associated with the shipping, including flag states, port states, international organizations like IMO, ILO, industry bodies, Representing ship owners, cargo interests, etc. Also, the seafarers themselves share the collective responsibility 
attend in a fair future for the seafarers. Next one, please. Unless we take immediate steps to uh, participate in a fair future for the seafarer, we will not be able to make the profession decide one for the future generations. Next one, please. The last one. There is a clear imbalance between what is expected from a seafarer to what is provided to the seafarer. Hence, we recognize the value they add to everyone's life. Have we recognized their contributions? So what I want to say, there is no slide. There is something we need to, all of us have to look at. We are all on the way out uh, in these professions and probably retired in a couple of years or maybe a few years more. What is important is we are not finding an absolute uh, the top candidates coming into the, uh, you know, uh, the C job. What the, uh, the, uh, the institutes have to be very uh, careful in recruiting the right uh, boys. And also I would suggest that probably from the ninth standard level in the school, we need to probably and give us some kind of a career uh, uh, you know, option to these boys and who are interested in joining so that they know there is such profession is available. So you get a whole lot of guys wanting to join this Merchant Navy and we can select the right candidate and put them on the right track. And with this, thank you, gentlemen. All the best and God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Ram. Uh, my apologies, please, but we did have to keep because there are other seven. No, no, so okay, because we, 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 we yeah. wasted lots okay. of time. Anyway, so moving on uh, we'll, to this uh, interactive session, Captain Krish and uh, Captain Ajay will be hosting it. Uh, over to you, sir. And please post your questions over and they will be posting their questions to the panelists. Good afternoon, everybody. Greetings to all of you. Uh, am I audible, uh, Dave? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. So greetings to all of you on the day of the seafarer. I think uh, we had a very interesting session with four, four speakers, uh, two of them from the sea perspective, active seafarers, and a couple of them from the office. Uh, I, I think uh, we'll take the questions now, uh, move to question and answer session. And uh, slightly behind schedule, we'll try and keep uh, take all those questions, whatever we can uh, during this time. But uh, I would request all of you to keep those questions coming in the chat box. So uh, we'll try and pick it up from there. Krish is uh, there with me, and then we'll try and get all those questions uh, out. I, I think uh, direct questions might be a little bit of a challenge on a, on a virtual platform with a lot of microphones on at the same time. So uh, we, we'll convey the questions. Uh, let's try and do that. And uh, if, if at all we still have time, uh, maybe we can have a direct interaction with the speaker. So uh, your, uh, your questions, please put in the chat box, keep it short, simple, and uh, try to address it to whom, uh, please mention to whom the question is addressed to. Uh, We'll set the floor open. Uh, Krish, do you, would you like to start? Thanks. Uh, thanks, Ajay. Uh, yeah, I've been uh, jotting down uh, some of the uh, uh, trail and uh, put some stuff together. There have been a couple of questions on uh, MV Anastasia and Jag Anand uh, and, and uh, the situation there. Um, is, is the Deputy Nautical Advisor uh, still on here? Yeah, will you be able to take this on? Captain Sagar. Yeah, I can hear. Hi, Captain Sagar. Uh, questions on uh, Anastasia and uh, Jaganand. I know these are tricky ones, but uh, uh, what can we do? I sorry, uh, this I'll have to check up and uh, revert. In general, policy or something you can ask me now. Otherwise, uh, yeah. I'll yeah, okay. There is there is one on uh, taxation, sir. I mean, you could, you could take that on. Uh, I know again, this is uh, going into the finance ministry, and there is always a tussle. Uh, but uh, either taxation exemption or there's one specific question on the idea of two years uh, uh, NRA to be clubbed together for uh, assessing the NRA days. Uh, is, are we making some headway there? I know that NUSI is working very hard on uh, these uh, issues. A fair taxation for the crew? Yeah, the process is on. NUSI is uh, obviously still trying, but uh, nothing has come out as such. So let us see, we'll uh, take from our end see how uh, this can be granted to the seafarers. But uh, so far, 
nothing <laughs> such as I, I understand I, these are not it's not these are not things that we, we can resolve over a, over a webinar and i, I know that it's just uh, we were hoping that there will be some kind of an update, some progress on this. Um, yeah, moving on um, uh, as I run through some of these questions. Uh, uh, on two occasions uh, during the presentation, the business of work rest hours uh, has come up and uh, there are some questions as to how, is there a sustainable good solution to fudging work rest hours? Uh, it's kind of self-contradictory because why would we want to fudge work rest hours? Uh, on the record keeping, uh, what purpose does it serve? Uh, May I break in? Captain uh, Lalit, Captain. Uh, Captain yeah, yeah, Ram. Uh, that question was posted by me to uh, Captain right. and uh, of course also to the uh, managers and owners. Yeah, I have been I'm, interacting I'm with a lot of uh, students, and uh, whenever we talk about and uh, rest and work hour. They say, sorry, sir, we have we cannot be truthful when we are uh, writing the or creating these yeah. reports. If we, yeah, yeah. We, we, we get the good we ones, the correct ones, then the owners get after us. And if we don't, then the administration. And if yeah, let's, there hear, is let's hear from the let's hear from the managers. I think they are closer to the owners. So let's uh, sorry uh, to interrupt. Uh, even the computer doesn't uh, 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 approve. It will show the red, so you cannot put that. No, sir. What I'm trying yep. to say is the crew has not taken the rest. Six plus yep. four. He has been he has been given only four and four, and he's still writing six and four. So what is the captain doing on board to stop that practice? And no, got it, got it. Let me let me let me let me, me let me cut that short. I understand. Okay. Let me, let me, let me. Uh, I think we have we have discussed this in many forums um, as to uh, why should this should actually happen. But uh, I think right now the question you have asked was uh, to some of the managers to see is there a is there to a Captain sustainable Samant. Solution? Yeah, the question was to Captain Samant. Yeah. Samant, uh, can Captain can you just Samant, shed some uh, light uh, light on this? What exactly? Or what? How how do you face this? Or how do you look at this problem where it's being fudged on board apparently? So, uh, Samant, are you there? Can you, can you come yeah, in? Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Sam. See, regarding fudging on board, yeah, that is not the issue I'm talking about. Fudging on board has to be, at some level, an individual responsibility. The problem is with compliance. Fudging, I don't appreciate it at all, at any rate. Compliance is very difficult. See, like uh, someone was saying, uh, the computer shows up red. So, uh, point is, Whatever planning and whatever you do, most of the days, the red cannot be avoided. So compliance with rest hours is very difficult, especially not so much with offices, but especially with ratings. Uh, many calls have been going around increasing manning levels and they have been provided where possible, but not uh, as much as is needed. So compliance is quite rare. And uh, yeah, fudging is not appreciated. Compliance is okay. That is the difficult part at present manning levels. If compliance is not possible, then people will fudge, you know. That's what I, any revalidation class when I interact on MLC with masters and chief engineers, that's what they tell me. No, no, I will. Shake up from HIMD. No, no, I can, I can speak on my personal experience only. But uh, I've had uh, run ins with uh, ship owners and managers where uh, non-compliance was shown and there was trouble with inspections, but that is how the nature of the job is right now. So non-compliance has to be shown if it is there. If you're fudging, then we are not helping anyone. Not us, not the managers. So can I, can I, throw, no can I throw the ball to Captain Lalit uh, for a, a, a gentleman? We all know the problem, so let, let's not... Uh, repeat the problem. I, I want to see if there is a solution uh, possible. Uh, uh, Captain Lalit, yes. message yes. is strong and clear. Yes. Yeah. So the, thing is, the, way the way forward is just a commitment from top to down because uh, in the, like Captain Simon was saying, it's not about fudging. It's, that's an individual responsibility. Uh, the situation is if a ship has to uh, go undergo an operation where the crew are having to be able to rest uh, and we still have a solution for that as of today. So 
provided she's had a long voyage, okay, there are two days of operations, and then we give a compensatory rest. That's one solution. But the problem generally happens on ships on very short run. So I've had ships operating on the West Arctic coast, uh, eight, eight to 10 hours of uh, voyage, and then you know, they've got a mixed port coming. On those ships, uh, basically they are hitting, uh, they're not complying, they will not be complying uh, quite often to go by the rule book. But there, there's no other solution except to provide additional uh, you know, hands on deck. And we've had uh, one ship of ours called the Duke. Captain uh, Lalit, can you keep your mic to a bit closer, please? You're yeah, not audible to a few. Still? Uh, better, no? Better, better. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'm saying we, this uh, issue, uh, of course, it's, it's, it's existing for a long time and uh, it's like being different to discuss, address directly. But I'm talking of what is there in our hands as managers of the ships to actually impact the situation. The first, uh, so I'm not going to talk about ships which are going transatlantic and then landing up, uh, you know, in operation for New York City for uh, one day or two days. We, they will be given compensatory rest and to the best of their ability, they will plan the work and rest uh, our schedule. Uh, we need to address the ships which are on short runs and uh, where they hardly have any time to rest up and before another operation comes up, not at cargo discharging or you know, loading, unloading. So it's on these ships that, uh, as a good example, I can just point out we had a ship uh, called the Duke and uh, she, uh, from being a normal tanker, the charter suddenly decided to put her on bunker trade. So she literally became a, a bunker vessel uh, operating in uh, West Africa, Lomi. And uh, it was a new experience to all of us because uh, in a day she was racking up about uh, three to four uh, operations. Uh, you know, from uh, that's not normal by any stretch of imagination. So uh, we we uh, saw that for about a week and then realized, well, no way uh, are we going to comply with the rest of us. Uh, the master complained, uh, as did all the crew. It's not uh, it's inhumane to expect anyone to you know operate at that, uh, that level of uh, efficiency. Maintaining the stars and all. So, what was done was we went to the chapters. This is one example. Maybe. We went to the chapters and said, Sir, whenever this master's is at the master's discretion, if he finds that they are not rested enough for the next operation, he will stop the ship for six to eight hours, again, depending on his discretion. Then he will give a green light that we are ready for the next operation because the next vessel would be ready anchored off us uh, coming in for the next operation. And this is the only way we could uh, address it. But I, at the same time, I highly doubt how practical it is to implement that across all uh, challenges you know, and different geographies. But uh, speaking from my experience, that was, that was what we could do uh, and that was what was in our uh, power to address. So uh, yeah, that's what it's from my side. Fair enough. Uh, can I take uh, yeah. can I Can I answer? For being candid, uh, hold on. Hold on. Uh, I think Captain R. K. Kumar had a quick statement. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Krish. And I think you know, I recall you were telling me that when you're coming out of a boat, you went and anchored your ship because you needed proper rest. I remember you telling me that a couple of about ten or twelve. Uh, it's years easier. Back. It's that, that's a different story. It, it's okay. easier when you're. And uh, company, so what I would say uh, is, uh, see, spirit and letter. Rest of work can only be followed in spirit, but it cannot be followed in letter. So long as the spirit of rest hour is understood by people on board, and in case like Captain Ravindra Sagar, MMD, those people can modify the MLC criteria that any deviation from rest hours should be properly justified by the captain and the person who did not have the proper rest. Because when you make ports, when you do sailing, short sailings, it is impossible to comply with the rest hour criteria for a short duration of time. But overall, if the spirit of the law is respected, I think that should be the criteria. And I think MLC can put that as one of the additional causes, that proper justification can be done. Then we don't have to work with computer algorithms. But PSC will not accept that. It's not uh, not uh, not an easy issue. Uh, once again, uh, so uh, I think will, the will boys don't control control control. Control. So can I commit? Can I commit? One, one, second, one moment. I think it is boiling down to uh, the safe um, manning certificate, minimum safe manning certificate issued by the flag. Uh, it's a kind of a static document as we see it now. 
it doesn't take into account operational issues uh, like suddenly the ship going from a transatlantic to a coastal run or, a, or an older ship or uh, doing special operations and uh, therefore uh, that, that is where the problem lies because whenever we as managers refer to uh, adequate manning the first document we refer to is the minimum safe manning and we say we are complying with it where is the problem the problem is that the ship has changed its operations and that is where issues uh, crop up but uh, uh, we are we are a bit short on time yeah, there is yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so can we can we move on to the next question yeah okay if that that remains uh, our topic always. I think somewhere it says, uh, you know, if it's minimum uh, minimum or safe minimum running certificate should be called safe operation certificate. Anyways, yeah, that's a topic which continues. Uh, uh, moving on, I think uh, we'll put a question to Captain Ram about social welfare measures uh, ashore, sir. Ram, mean, can you uh, declare anything that you would like to throw some light on? Or what are the social welfare uh, measures being taken ashore uh, for seafarers and their families? Captain Ram, are you there? Captain uh, Ajay, can I suggest something for this social security measures? Uh, and, and let, let's see if Captain Ram is there, sir. If he's not, then of I, course... Uh, I don't see him here. Uh, he's, he's not, not there? there. No. All right. Okay. He's not there. I think... Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. We, we, we should uh, suggest to DG Shipping, as per MLC, there are social security measures which has to be uh, programmed, planned, and implemented ashore. Uh, it will be a good idea to do something like the central government uh, supported health scheme or the ex servicemen's uh, contributory health scheme and link them to some known uh, hospital groups like ESI, whereby the companies can directly contribute on behalf of the seafarers to ESI. I'm not talking about the affluent ship managers or affluent seafarers who are already in business. They may not require the support. But all of us are not doing business. All of, our, all of us are not very affluent. There are people who are just trying to meet the ends after coming out of sea. There are officers, there are crew members, but there are no safety net for them as far as the medical uh, insurance is concerned or medical guarantees to the families are concerned. We are aware we are fully covered as long as we are serving on board the ships, but it doesn't cover the family ashore. So if, uh, if, uh, if the National uh, you know, Maritime Day Committee can form a small uh, you know, consultative uh, people to suggest to DG how this can be implemented, because we are not even members of the MUI. You know, MUI doesn't take you as a member if you are not a sailing seafarer. So we don't have any safety net under the mariners. So it should be uh, put across to DG to create this uh, social security for all the seafarers as one of the measures as stated in MLC. MLC is not the liability of RPSL agencies. MLC is the liability of the government. So we should put it across to DG Shipping that they should create an infrastructure and must streamline how the shipping companies can contribute how the sailing seafarers can contribute so that they have a safety net when they retire or decide to come ashore. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Captain Venkat. I think DG is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah he can, he, he can be DG. I don't know. Whoever is there, it's, it's so, a, a thought from you, sir. Proposal can be put to us. We are welcome to all the proposals. And uh, uh, then it can be looked into. So, I means people should go ahead and uh, put it up. Sure, sir. We will, I will give you a, a model, what we are doing in the, for the ex-servicemen, the, the lot of benefits government is doing, it is contributory. Actually, it is ex-servicemen contributory health scheme. That means during his service, he contributes. Probably you are a central government service, you will also be knowing about the central government contributory health services. Same way, the shipping companies can be told to contribute. Seafarers can also step in and contribute so that they have a safety net till they breathe their last. It is not only for them, it is for the entire family. No such scheme has been implemented or thought of by uh, our, our, our society. So the societies for officers and crew members, we can think something like that. And some, some people can join not together, it. streamline it, formulate it, and give it to you on a paper. Not it, Thank not you, it, sir. Not it, Captain Venkat. Yeah, yeah. You can, you you can send the proposal across. And, uh, uh, and uh, okay, any more questions? Uh, uh, one, more, one last before we... Yeah, yeah, last okay. question, uh, yeah. Captain Krish. That's all. Yeah. 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 Krish, uh, Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you all uh, for, yeah, for your time. Over to you. Uh, yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So then, uh, uh, if uh, there's no more last, we could take uh, Captain Krish, Captain Ajay. I think we'll we'll wind down. I I know there are other people who have to go to other seminars after this. So can I call on uh, Mr. Anil Kumar now, the Chairman, IMEI Chennai, to deliver the vote of thanks? A quick one, please.
Yeah, uh, thank you, Captain uh, Mitra, and uh, distinguished uh, dignitaries and delegates and fellow seafarers. As the chairman of IMEI, it's my privilege to propose a word of thanks on this occasion uh, on behalf of uh, NMDC, IMEI, CMMI, and NI. On a day, we pay respect to seafarers and who are essential to uh, as for functioning of uh, the world we live in. Uh, at, at first of all, I would like to thank, express my uh, profound gratitude to uh, Sajid Sukumaran, uh, PO MMD, and colleagues at uh, MMD and DG Shipping, who are guiding force behind this forum and uh, bringing uh, together all three institutes uh, uh, into a single uh, maritime fraternity to conduct this event. Our, our deep sense of appreciation uh, to Captain uh, Ravindra Sagar, a Deputy Nautical Advisor, come uh, Senior uh, Deputy DG Tech uh, for delivering the keynote address. And we are grateful to all our four speakers, uh, A.M. Ramakrishnan from LDCL, Captain uh, Saman uh, Bhaktavalsam, uh, Fleet Management, Captain Lalit uh, Manipu from V Ships, and Captain uh, G. Ramaswamy uh, from OSM uh, Fleet uh, Management. Uh, so uh, the, all the, the keynote speakers and as well as uh, all our speakers have covered uh, well the theme, uh, fair future for the seafarers. And it's not worthy to see uh, uh, impeccable leadership by various organizations uh, who take who has taken multiple actions uh, to ensure physical and mental well-being of seafarers and ease up the situation to enable the seafarers to conduct their uh, duty uh, during this trying time. IMO, National Administration, uh, advocated uh, seafarers should be considered as a frontline workers. And there is vaccination drive, signing on, signing off, air connectivity as various port by ship operators and various seafarers organization. Uh, so as a maritime fraternity, now we are working together to support our fellow seafarers. A big thanks to uh, the delegates who join uh, from Chennai, Pan India, uh, as well as overseas. And thank you for your participation and uh, your comments and questions during the uh, deliberations. And we would like to th express our sincere thanks to uh, Captain Vaidi Mishra, Secretary Nautical Institute, uh, for introducing the event uh, as well as uh, you know conducting this forum well. And Sanjeev Akhil, Vice Chairman NMDC, Secretary IMEI, for the welcome address. And Captain uh, Ajay Gangadharan and Captain Chris uh, Shivaraman. Uh, President and uh, uh, Nautical Institute and Ajay, uh, Chairman of uh, CMMI, for facilitating uh, the panel discussions. And uh, Captain uh, D. Bhartia, uh, Vice Chairman CMMI, uh, Captain uh, V. Uh, Ganeshyam, Secretary uh, uh, CMMI, uh, Suresh Shenoy, uh, Treasurer IMEI, and Captain uh, Krish uh, Shivaraman, President Nautical Institute, for introducing the speakers. Uh, last but not the least, we appreciate the contributions uh, from our, our technical partner, HIMT, uh, and the media partner, Marex. In case if I missed out anyone, uh, our sincere thanks to all who indirectly and directly helped us to uh, make this event a successful one. Hope we meet the next year event uh, uh, so we can po possibly meet and shake hand uh, and, and make a direct eye contact. Until then, Stay safe and take care. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anil. And yes, uh, I agree with you. I hope we can make eye contact the next time around. We hold this something like this. Yeah. Uh, certainly. Though overall, it's been I'm a sure. very, very great uh, summation. A number of new points have come up. Captain Venkat has really spoken well. Uh, thank you. I think everybody should put on their uh, uh, videos. Now, I, uh, um, Mr. Vakil, we have uh, uh, Mr. Kanan with us. Yeah, yeah, he's there. Uh, okay, so, uh, so lastly, just uh, this is important. This is about COVID. This is for everybody who's attending the uh, webinar today. Uh, we have a brief message from one Mr. Uh, Kannan of uh, Lifeboat Trust uh, for people who may need help in times of COVID. Uh, Mr. Kannan, can you come on and put on that slide, please? Oh, I am not uh, sorry. No, not, not you, sir. Uh, I think uh, oh, was, Mr. Kannan, uh, one more. Somebody else. Uh, that, was an, uh, that was another gentleman. Yes, there it is. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Hi, this is Kanan here from Lifeboat Foundation Trust. We have 10 oxygen concentrators and this is dedicated to all seafarers and their families and also to anybody who is in need. 
So please call us. I will share the numbers if at all anybody requires. And please be safe and thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kanan. Thank you for coming on. Yes, so the Lifeboat uh, Foundation, for anybody who requires or knows of anybody who requires help in, in these times uh, for oxygen concentration. And thank you very much. Uh, you may all put on your videos uh, and we can... Uh, Sanjeev, sir, we'll have a... Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, photo. Yeah, we can have a photo. Yes, why not? Yes, we can have. We have all delegates... Uh, I think uh, Rai Sab, I think in the next, uh, I think we have National Maritime Day celebration. Now, I think uh, one thirty we have UK National Maritime Day celebration thing. And then uh, we have uh, uh, Nash, uh, Central uh, National Maritime Day celebration, Mr. Rai, uh, who is organizer of that, uh, where DG Shipping and the Minister probably are coming in across at 4 o'clock, 4 to 6. And probably overlapping with 5 o'clock uh, with Kuchi. I believe Kuchi also, I got an invite. Kuchi also is hiring at 5 o'clock, uh, but I'm not sure, I think. So you'll have to have two computers to be in both the places. So yeah, if everybody can switch on, I think we can take a snapshot, please. Uh, or can switch on the camera, please. Those who can, then we can have a good cheese. Yeah. OK. Yes, Thank please. you very much yeah. for joining. Thank you very much for joining everybody. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Very well organized. Thank you all. Congratulations. Well done, very well done. Very well done. Thank you, Captain. Thank Captain, you. Uh, yeah. Captain Matthews. Yeah, Captain sir. Captain sir, thank you very much. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Yes, yes, uh, well done, well done, everyone. Be safe. Thank you for all. Thank Be you. Safe. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Yeah. I see your face, Captain uh, Philip Matthew. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Nice. Same year, same feelings here. <laughs> Oral of the story, one and a half hours webinar will be successful. Thank you. Kuchin, we are, we are Ganesh, have Kuchin. your party. Ganesh, you can have your party. Bye bye. Yeah, one and a half hours webinar is fantastic. Bye. Yes, uh, we were able to maintain the time, and I still see that it's uh, we had about 200 uh, something uh, people still. Uh, yeah, we, we, no, no, yes, we uh, hit 360. 300, uh, 360 plus, yes, uh, at one point. 360 plus, yeah. Well done, Captain yeah. Mishra. You did a fantastic job. Thank yes. you, sir. Thank you. Well done, you made it very clear that you were to ring the bell. <laughs> 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 very important. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, very much. Bye, Bye, gentlemen. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you to the committee. Well done. Thank Cheers. You. Good day. Thank you. Good day, sir. Good day.